But their most powerful tool is language. Unlike the Neanderthals, the language of the Cro-Magnons is rich and more complex. It's the trigger for art and culture. It allows individuals to form much larger social groups and to trade goods and form alliances in times of need. These new ways of living had devastating consequences for the Neanderthals. At their peak around 50,000 years ago, an estimated 100,000 Neanderthals lived within this border. But the spread of modern man from Africa and the Middle East was relentless. In groups of up to 100 individuals, the Cro-Magnons colonized Europe's prime locations, monopolizing resources. The Neanderthals were forced out of their valleys onto the inhospitable mountain plateaus of Croatia and the Crimea, and west onto the rocky coastlines of Portugal, Spain, and France. By 35,000 years ago, their numbers had dwindled to a few thousand. Here on the high ground, there is little vegetation to support animal life, little water, and no natural protection from the weather. With wind chill, temperatures can be 30 degrees colder than in the river valleys below. With their short, sturdy bodies, Neanderthals are physically more able to survive here than Cro-Magnons. But nothing in their evolutionary past has prepared them for this impoverished existence. They need to eat, but cut off from their territorial hunting grounds, they find it harder to hunt prey. They need to maintain their population, but cut off from other Neanderthal clans, they find it harder to reproduce. The ties that have bound them together are beginning to come apart.